Hello and welcome back to another of my episodes of PS Crafty DIY. Does your blade drift away? Are your cuts not that straight? Or are they not perfectly perpendicular? Well, you've come to the right place. I had similar problem with my budget band saw, but with a good setup, I managed to eliminate all of them. So let me show you how I set up my band saw for perfect cuts. However, if you are interested to see my full review of this budget band saw, including unboxing, full assembly, and setup, follow the link at the top. Right, let's get started. Safety first, make sure the supply cable is disconnected from the mains. I'll open both guards and begin with setting the blade tracking and tension. When tracking, always make sure that the blade is sat on the ground of the wheel with the deepest part of the gullet in the center. To do this, you first need to apply some tension to the blade with the handle at the top. Then spin the top wheel in the blade cutting direction with your hand whilst turning the tracking control handle at the back. Watch which way the blade is moving and keep adjusting tracking accordingly until the blade is in the correct position and stays there. Next step is to set the blade tension. This is usually checked inside the saw. Simply push the blade towards the spine of the saw, applying a moderate pressure. The blade should deflect by approximately 6 mm or 1 quarter of an inch. Once happy, always check the tracking again as moving the wheels up or down to get the right tension can cause the blade to move. All looks good so I can lock it off and move on to setting the guides. A bandsaw will only cut accurately if the blade guides are set correctly, so these are quite important. You might have to drop the table off for better access and loosen the guide brackets so you can move them easily where they need to be. First we need to set the side guide front to back adjustment. The front edge of the bearing needs to be sat just behind the deepest part of the gullet on the blade. Just about 1.5mm behind the gullet or 1 16th of an inch. If the bearing sits inside the gullet, it's going to flatten the teeth out and form a knife edge. That's something we try to avoid. So now we've got this set at the top, we'll do the exact same thing at the bottom. Next step is to set the thrust bearings on the top and the bottom. These are supporting the blade from the back and should be positioned just behind the blade, but never in contact with it. If you get it too far forward, it's going to tweak the blade just enough to cause it to drift. So the best way to do this is to bring the bearing in whilst rotating the wheel until it comes in contact with the blade, then back it off slightly. These are quite important, so take time to set them just right. Right, let's come back to the side guides for a bit. These are set similarly. Bring them in towards the side of the blade, so they come in contact, then back them off slightly, so they are not touching the blade while it rotates round. The side guides are there to stop the back edge of the blade fishtailing. If you get any of the bearings rubbing against the blade, you're gonna destroy them very quickly. They need to be just a hairline away from it. Now all guides are set, we can ensure the table is perpendicular to the blade, so our cut will be at 90 degrees angle too. This is done with the set square or digital angle finder, and the adjustment can be made with a bolt underneath the table. There we go, that looks pretty square to me. We can verify the squareness by making a test cut. Considering both sides of the wood that we are using are parallel to each other, we can make a cut. Then flip the wood over, bring it around back and check if the blade fits perfectly back into the cut. If it does, we know the table is square to the blade across the whole surface. Right, we can now set the pointer on the scale to indicate 0 degrees. Next step is to align the fence with the mighty slot. Simply bring your fence to the mighty slot edge and check if it runs parallel with it. Or you can find yourself a board with a machine flat surface that fits right into the slot and then align the fence with a straight board. The fence adjustment can be made using the two screws on the top, so just loosen them off, bring the fence to the face of the board, align it and tighten them back up. Don't go overboard with these so you don't strip the threads. Some people align the fence with the blade though, not with the mitre gauge. They place a straight edge flat on the table, lining it up with the body of the blade, in between the teeth as these are offset from the blade. Then align the fence to the straight edge. Now this should work perfectly fine for making straight cuts, but I found it inaccurate. More importantly, using this method, your blade might be parallel with your fence, but it definitely won't be parallel with your mighty slot, making the mighty slot with the mighty gate 
completely useless for mitre cuts. So let's align the fence with the mitre slot and then align the whole table to the blade. That way the fence and the mitre slot will be parallel to the blade. This adjustment can be made by slacking off these four bolts underneath the table. These are fixing the table to the trunnion, but provide enough movement for us to set the table parallel to the blade. Now there is a couple of methods for doing this. You can use your mitre gauge and a set square. Ensure the mitre gauge is set to 90 degrees, tighten in place and at this point you can set your pointer to indicate 90 degrees if you like. Slide your mitre gauge into the mitre slot and place your set square into the mitre gauge so it is in contact with the blade. Slowly slide the mitre gauge forward and watch if the set square runs parallel with the blade. If the set square runs into the blade, your table needs to be shifted anti-clockwise. And if the set square runs away from the blade, your table needs to be shifted clockwise. So have a little play. And what if you haven't got a mitre gauge? Well, the following method should work for you. You'll need a board that you know is perfectly square and you'll need your fence that has already been aligned with the mitre slot. Using your set square, draw a couple of lines on the board. Set your fence so the blade is on your first line and make a test cut. Watch if the blade cuts along your line precisely or if it starts to drift away from it. If it drifts away from the line, shift your table in an appropriate direction to compensate for the drift. I found it a bit difficult using the original blade, as it was all over the place, but once I swapped for a proper blade, it was fairly easy. So let's see how accurate we really are. 28.68 on one end, and 28.64 on the other. Well, I think I can live with that, so let's tighten the fixing bolts, and set the point on our fence to indicate zero, once the fence is in contact with the teeth on the blade. And that's it, we are all set. So let's see how this setup on this budget bandsaw performs. I'm using the original blade. Its width is 10mm or 3.8 and it's a 6 dpi. First up is this melamine coated chipboard. Well, the cut appears to be fairly clean and reasonably straight. But feed it with something thicker and the blade starts to drift. This can ruin your day, really. So, I bought a set of good quality blades and had a go again. This is a half inch 4 TPI blade. Let's see how it goes. The bandsaw setup is the same. Not bad. Not bad at all. What about resawing this African Iroko? 120mm high. This is the maximum throat capacity of the saw. Let's try, just need to feed it slow. Well, would you look at that? Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. You can't compare a half inch blade with a 3 8 on a straight cut, eh? Well, of course not, so I've set up the saw with a blade a lot smaller. This is a 316.6 TPI blade, and it's actually slightly smaller to what the manufacturer recommends running in this saw. 25.34 and 25.38 Let's try the thicker stock, will it cut straight? Yes it does, and it looks like there is plenty of support from the bearings to run blade even this thin. Ok, while I've got this blade installed, let's try cutting those intricate cuts. I'm sure most of you are looking to get a bandsaw to do just that. Alright, that seems to be working well. In fact, so well, I managed to make my first ever two bandsaw boxes on this saw. If you are interested to see how I made those bandsaw boxes, please subscribe and hit that notification bell, as videos for both builds are coming soon. Last thing I would like to mention is that sometimes with these budget saws, the mitre gauge has excessive play in the mitre slot, making it absolutely useless as it will not maintain the set angle during the cut. Luckily there is a solution. If you use a double-sided tape and stick a piece of plastic strip onto the side of the mitre gauge runner, it will close the gap and the mitre gauge then actually performs fine. You shouldn't have to do this really, but it is what it is. Just find yourself something that fits in there nice and snug. Thank you all for watching and if you have enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, please like, share or subscribe as it will help me create more content for you.